were calling for, we went to leave at 4.30 this morning, got up, looked out, we could see the breakwater, and the breakwater you could see all the way down, and it looked pretty rough, and we could hear it. We knew it was getting calmer, um, seas were, like the winds and the seas were calming down, so basically what we did is uh, we just waited till we could see um, a little more. Um, so we're heading out there now, unfortunately it's, it's, it's a little late, so we might be showing up at the next place in the dark. Or we're going to see what we can do once we get out of the breakwaters and stuff. Hopefully the current will grab us and we'll pick up, pick up some speed. Hopefully roll in there by 6, 6.30 and get a little bit late. So uh, anyway, we'll keep you posted and uh, we're out of here. Little island on the way out of Veracruz. These are, according to their um, windy apps and all that stuff, this is what they consider one and a half meter swells. Uh, now, I know I brought this up numerous times, it's probably annoying to you, but one and a half meter swells is honestly the equivalent to probably eight to nine footers, okay? So, if anybody's planning on doing this, um, just keep your eye on your, on your frequency of the waves. It's the most important thing. So, anything six seconds or more, you're going to have a nice rolly ride. Um, when it starts dropping below, and if it starts dropping below, uh, like five seconds, you're start going to, you're, it's going to be very, very uncomfortable. So, six seconds, eight, you got a couple of 10 footers here. Um, and but still, extreme, it's not, it, it's okay, right? So, um, yeah, you can, you can still see shoreline, uh, probably roughly six to seven miles away from shore, and we have another uh, eight hours to go. So, I stepped up the RPMs a little bit, um, just so I could try to squeeze in there before it gets too dark. I'm hoping before seven o'clock. And, uh, but so far it's been good. Uh, yes, I have the flare gun out. Uh, the reason being is there's a couple of fishing boats that came at us. There has been a little bit of signs of piracy um, in the news lately. Um, this is just something to keep me at mind, you know what I mean? Um, that's what we have just to warn them. So we, we, we were covered anyway. And uh, anyway, just want to keep it posted. I'm trying to give you guys a little bit, I know a lot of you guys, um, especially on the trawling uh, sites, uh, everybody wants to experience this and stuff like that. So listen, I, I, I'm not a, I, I've never been one for the big sea experiences. Yes, I spent quite a bit of time. I spent 30 years out on the water, not in the Gulf. Um, so this is all new to me. Your big, big giant swells that come across, they're not always in the same direction. This is kind of like a washing machine in this area. The bottom part of the Gulf of Mexico is notorious for not steady setting swells and stuff. So, um, research, research, check your weather hourly, and uh, not only one app, but if you got four or five or six, uh, highly suggested. Anyway, thank you. Hey guys, what's going on, Rodney? Not much. We are, Alan? yeah, there is a lot. We are, uh, just about to come by Mundo, Mundo Nuevo, something like that. At least we see the shoreline, the sandy cliffs. All mountains. Yeah, mountains, pretty nice. And uh, from then we'll start heading on in. And uh, we are now at, what roughly is the time is it? 11? 11, exactly. 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Estimated time, 5.46. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. A little rolly, but it's been like that all day. Um, not uncomfortable, just rolly. But, uh, yeah, we're Five hours there. in, six to go. Six to go, we're hanging in there.
Okay, guys, we're about uh, 14, uh, what are we? Exactly, uh, oh, about three and a half hours away from Cote Secolis. It's a uh, nice lighthouse, some breaks, some, and uh, so far it's been great. Uh, it picks up and slows down quite a bit, but aside from that, it is what it is. Um, but we're getting there. We'll keep you posted. They got my wife's on top of the paperwork. Go. Just pulling into Coats. Coats of Cold Coal. It's a little hairy. I think I took a video, I'm just not sure if I got it. Donnie's here concentrating. It's a little hairy. Vamos a ver si está Well, we made it safe. Don't you got to sue the breakwater? <laughs> got the ticker going, a little puckered up. Yeah, it was a little extreme. A little hairy. It's nice down, no? Coza Coco. Coza Coco. Now, we're having a uh, small issue going on here, which uh -oh. is uh, basically um, we have a Tampico that we're in there for uh, two and a half days, almost three. Um, we're informed now that we're actually missing some people. So I have to leave in the morning uh, before 8 and be down at the Harbor Master with all my paperwork and try to straighten this out. So um, we'll see how it goes in the morning. So at least we're allowed into the port. So that's huge. Park for the night just before sunset. Yes, sir. Pretty cool little place. Well, good morning. So, here's where we're at. So, basically, uh, Coats of the Colas or something like that. Uh, I tried to uh, pull off from anchor, get some fuel, um, and contacted the traffic control. And basically at this point, uh, I'm denied even access to leave the port. Uh, paperwork reporting to them is not completed, even though it's been fine ever since on all the other ports. Um, they will not instruct me at all on where to get fuel. I need fuel. Uh, I could probably make it to the next one if I limped it. Uh, it'd be tight and I don't want to roll like that. Um, unfortunately, the weather window today is now pretty much shot and it's beautiful. It would have been the nicest day ever. And uh, so um, I have to wait till at least 9 a.m. Nothing we do matters. It's all down to a sort of like a brokerage department. Um, and nothing we do can fix it. So we have to wait for paperwork from Tampico apparently. That was not sent properly, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, hope your day is better than ours. So thanks to Yamana and Chris, got a ride from Yamana's uncle. Yeah. And we're doing a tour through, uh, how do you say, Costa, Costa Colleens? Costa, yeah. oh, sure, wherever, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, absolutely fantastic. We've got a great parking spot. We'll show you that later. Oh, oh Corona! Corona yeah. store! <laughs> Any beer? Yes. How do you pronounce that? Coast, coast, co Costa No. No, uh. Sans, Sans. Costa Cola. Lolas is here. The town. Co 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 Co
Yeah, I gotta work on my Spanish people. Quatzacuercos. 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 All right, we're getting there. All right. So, just wanted to give a little shout out to Chris and Yumena. They got us a amazing spot to stay at. At uh, her uncle's friend's place. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Fantastic. And this is all due to Chris and Yumena. They uh, really, really helped us out. Absolutely fantastic. The winds, as you can see out there, are not uh, well, you can exactly. <laughs> I almost got hit by a coconut by no deal. Um, so anyway, thanks again guys. Really appreciate this, Chris and Mena. Um, nice to actually park at a dock that uh, we're well and secured and, and uh, just a great spot overall. So thanks again guys. Love you. This is nuts. <laughs> this is <just> <laughs> So we're uh, we're heading out this morning, and uh, you and his uncle have picked us back up again. And we're just uh, heading back out. And, uh, we'll Beautiful practice. roads to travel. Yeah, it's normal. <laughs> It's like going the back roads of Calabogie, but different, that's, right? That's it, yeah, yeah, but different. Except you're driving out to a highway in one minute. Yeah. From your house. Yeah. It's just pretty much normal. They had the grader in here yesterday, so they did a little bit of work. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're working on it. <laughs> Grab it if you like it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hello everybody. Yeah. We got our uh, guide. He just brought us to the beach. Uh, those are, uh, I don't know, 10 foot pages with zero frequency. Uh, they got it. You're right. Absolutely zero frequency. Uh, Make sure I don't get this guy's license plate in here, but yeah, basically, uh, um, yeah. So if you are in Quartz uh, Aquilas, whatever you do, is do not come in here first of all and second of all if you have to come in um, this is what you're dealing with to try to get fuel <laughs> so yeah we got her done why is like unbelievable martin trini ah we're doing good boys muchas gracias my god look at and <laughs> Katie always says, just relax. Tranquil. Just relax. <laughs> Tranquil. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Stay. Just relax, man. <laughs> and as you can see, yes, I'm giddy and happy. And uh, I'm not going to tell you why we're getting fuel like this, but it is what it is. So, um, anyway, this is awesome. Fuel it up. This will uh, fill it up. That's a thousand liter tank. Uh, that's about uh, 500 piece. That'll keep us going for another couple of uh, two, three days uh, with big chips. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, we just got fuel. Now that I'm kind of settled, I figured I'd uh, just give you guys a little bit of a tour here. So, um, so this is apparently a fishing resort of some way, shape, or form from Yumena's uncle's buddy. Um, can't really explain it. Um, anyway, it's super cool. Old sailboat with the rigging. 
And uh, <laughs> uh, just goes to show you when you got the right crew, um, you can back in <laughs> to anywhere. Yeah. So anyway, luckily uh, with the structure and everything wasn't too windy. But uh, all right, guys. So um, <laughs> as you see in my face, I'm a little relieved and a little sweaty. So um, we are now officially full of fuel. You've probably seen the other video there just in front of this one. Um, full of fuel. We got permission to leave. We're good to go. Um, and can't thank Arcadio enough for all the help. And it's been three days, but as well, we couldn't leave. Uh, weather was bad, no fuel, everything got arranged. And uh, the guy, so I, I don't even know what else to do. There's a whole bunch of complications in the system here with getting fuel. Um, I can tell you, if anybody has any questions, I can tell you where to come to and where to avoid. That's the best thing I can describe. Um, without their help, I don't know which way to do it. It is a, what's the proper way to say it? Everybody wants a little piece of the pie. Um, I can't really describe it. All I know is I'm fixed up. If you have any questions at all, uh, hit me or uh, Charlene up and we'll be more than happy to explain it on the personal message or anything. All right. Anyway, we'll be off tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., another 10 or 12 hour journey. Good morning, everybody. Just leaving uh, our lovely spot. We've got Arcadia, the gentleman guiding me out. Um, you can see we're running a little thin on water and you can't see anything. So, uh, yeah, it's going to bring us out to the bridge. We'll figure it out from there. The seas are, what's the best way to describe it? Um, unfortunately, I don't trust anything. Um, these apps are not, is not what you're thinking. Um, the best thing I can recommend is, is poke your head out, take a peek, and obviously look at your app, see what's going to do throughout the day. But aside from that, just take a peek. Um, but down this river, it's stunning. That is called the, uh, geez, I know, Ter Terra Nova Hotel. Um, would have been a nice place to stay. Unfortunately, uh, the wind would have been uh, a little too much for us anyway. Um, so, but anyway, we're on our way and we'll keep you posted as to make sure that we uh, be allowed out of the harbor and um, hopefully this all goes well. We're just heading under the bridge now. We got our personal guide that took care of us for the last two days. There they are, personal taxi, personal guides, brought us right to the bridge, brought us right into their place. Fed us at his house for two days. Great guys. Arcadio, he did everything for us. Helped us out, helped us get gas, groceries, drove us around. Hola! <laughs> Adios, amigos! <laughs> Hasta luego, gracias, muchas gracias. There's a Mexican uh, dry dock station. Basically, uh, that'll drop down. Uh, it'll sink itself. Boats come in, lifts back up, get your work done on your boat. Get some more. Some the Mexican Navy. Everywhere we've been going, there's uh, lots of naval, uh, lots of naval uh, warships. And then you can see the entrance here. So that gate drops down, they flood it, and uh, bring it back up. And that's how they get to work done on their boats. Sorry about the canvas, guys. Pretty cool, eh? We are in the midst of just waiting for uh, a couple of ships to come in and out, and then we'll be free to go. Hey, guys. Uh, just want to say thanks to everybody for watching and, uh, and subscribing. Um, the feedback's been fantastic. So really enjoying the journey. Uh, it's got a lot of ups and downs, obviously. Uh, a couple things I just want to uh, clear up. Uh, I had some questions. Uh, so we, I left uh, South Padre Island, Texas, and I actually cleared into Mexico in Tampico. So in the video, you're going to help me say Tampico. So we're, we're coming around the Western Gulf, right? Um, as for Quetzalcoatl, um, if you don't need to go there, I'd suggest you just stay away. So not pleasure craft friendly. 
um, no real place to get fuel there. Luckily, Arcadio, um, fantastic man, took care of us, took us out for lunch. Uh, everything got us some fuel. Um, bit of a hard time there. So if it wasn't for that man, I'd, I'd be short into the stick. So um, anyway, I just want to clarify a few things. So uh, we're still going. Everything's going good. The boat is being fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep on going. So uh, keep on watching, subscribing, and uh, loving it, guys. Talk soon.